Hello ladies and mostly gentlemen, I'm Vinny B and today we're building racing doors for the Smart Booza. On this episode we will well grind and machine aluminum parts and also wave at some plastic panels for no apparent reasons. So welcome to part 22 on the Smart Booza. Guys, just before the bill, a quick word from our sponsor, me! Yes, I'm very much enjoying myself with this YouTube thing and creating fun to watch videos, but I'm still a small channel and my goal is to reach 100,000 subscribers. I I'm getting there, but uh, you know, uh, still a long way to go. So I'll really appreciate if you like to subscribe to my channel and maybe a small like. And yeah, why not a comment and bonus? Alright, let's pick up where we last left from episode 21. If you recall it, we just freshly vacuum formed big ABS panels to create doors. So now let's cut them out. Hmm, cutting plastic. But with what? Oh, that means only one thing. Buying a new tool. And it's an Ingersoll Rand reciprocated saw. That's a mouthful. Model 429. There was a lot of good comments about it, but it seems that the blades were a bit shitty. That's fine. Quick trip to the Home Depot, where I picked up a 10x14 TPI for plastic and an 18 TPI for steel. I don't need these anymore. And with a little bit of grinding magic, I end up with two sets of, hopefully, better quality blades. Ooh. <laughs> okay, just before cutting the paddle, let me explain my plan. I think the edges are not sharp enough. There's a big swoop in it. That's the end result of a too cold plastic pole. So I will cut around these edges, leaving about 2 inches of material. Then I will try to eat it up again and try to shape it into a more 90 degree-ish side wall. Oh well, the, let's call it, lightweight approach seems not to work. So let's bring the big guns. Ah, come on, I think I just ruined this panel. Being all wobbly. Ah, damn it. Yeah, let's mold another one. If you want to see the vacuum forming process, please have a look down below. You'll find links for part 1 and 2 of the vacuum forming machine. But please do this after watching this video. This message will self-destruct in 3, 2, 1. Okay, I need to pause here. Because while I was watching this footage, I realized three things. One, I still suck at vacuum forming big parts. Now, have you ever seen this learning curve? I know we're all more familiar with this one, but I think this one is more accurate with reality. So at part one of the vacuum forming machine, I was here and I had no idea on what I was doing. Did a couple of things right. Then I move up on top of the first bump with part two on the vacuum forming machine. Thinking I mastered the thing and that I was the king of the world. Yeah, the world of vacuum forming machine that is. Now I'm here, it sucks and it cost me money every time I fell a pole. And that's another one. And again. And again. So hopefully I'm close to that bottom curve and I should eventually rise up a bit with this process. The other thing I realize is that the heating burners doesn't heat the plastic evenly from front to back. You can even see it by the texture of the plastic. It's shinier here and we've got more texture on this side. So to counter that, I will heat up the plastic as usual, but at the midway of the heating process, I will rotate it. Finally, the plastic looks like a granny skin. Have you ever tried to pull and fit a granny skin over? Where am I going with this? The point is, I need to have a quite hot and melty plastic if I want to generate sharp edges and more details in the forming. More heat create a bigger belly and I keep failing to place and move around all that extra skin. So yeah, I think I should come up with an area to height ratio. The longer the part is, the higher the part should sit. 
I think this is why the fender pull went better and I picked up so many details in the forming. But what is the right ratio? I, I don't know. But I'll figure it out. So I did the second pull. Unfortunately, since I just figured out the ratio trick and to prevent creating such a big belly, I did this one colder. So it ended up that the edges were not really sharp, but luckily they didn't have to be. There it is guys, my first vacuum form panel on the Smart. I think with all the pop rivets and with the Lexan window, that door is gonna be sexy as hell. I double checked the outer framing on the Smart to see how wide I had to cut the plastic. And apparently, not that much. Yeah, just about half an inch. So all those pulls to get sharper edges were maybe for nothing. But at least I learned things, uh, well I guess. It's not like I scrap a lot of plastic. Uh, what are you looking at? <clears throat> There's nothing to see here. Uh, move along, people. All right, let's uh, build a frame. You just saw me use these! It's called a Clico kit and I just bought it for this job. It comes from the aircraft industries and I use them all the time back when I was a student at the aeronautical design and manufacturing school. Their temporary fasteners and the more typical sizes are 1.8 and 316. They are really simple to use. You drill a pilot hole, 1.8 or 316, and using the plier, you will compress the built-in spring to taper down these two little legs. When you release the tension, the little legs will wedge and secure firmly the two pieces together. Quite useful for a quick fit. Now they are fairly used in the body and fab shops. And since I'm kind of building panels here, I thought they would be a great addition to my tooling arsenal. I put the link downstairs if you're interested in them. Next step, hinges. I could reuse the hinges from the Smart, but they are heavy. Plus you could argue that my thumbnail was a clickbait and that I didn't handmade 100% of this door myself. So let's make new hinges, but this time in aluminum. Spoiler alert, I'm using a really, really cheap spool gun on my Lincoln welder. So the welds are really bad looking, but strong. Just like uh, your cousin, you know, the ugly but uh, strong one. I'm planning of getting myself a thick welder, but uh, yeah, if you could just not tell my wife, please. Thank you. Let's go.
It looks promising. I'll need to fix that. Better. Ah, this one is wrong for the two holes. This. Not good. Not good. But again, with magic of editing. I'm getting good at uh, this magic editing trick. I should have done that with the Smart Booza. The entire Smart Booza. Yeah, maybe next time. Alright, let's see how much weight we lost. That's Alright, so it sits at 4.78 pounds. Let's see the aluminum one. 2.16. Nice! So it's half the weight of these. Excellent! Alright, next step. Welding this one to the door and see how it fits on the car. <laughs> oh yeah, perfect. Nice. And with the fender, um, it's looking good. It's not perfect by any mean, but uh, we're getting there. I still have a little bit of fine tuning and I will cut a little bit more plastic on the edge right here. Um, should have a better fit here. All right. All right, guys, that's it for part one on the racing doors. I know there's still a ton of work to do on it, but since I didn't want to make a 20-25 minutes long video, I decided to separate this build into two parts. Next episode, we will build the Lexan windows with its aluminum framing, custom mirrors, and a complete full aluminum locking system. Yeah, I told you guys, I'm building 100% of this thing. And also a quick reminder, please consider subscribing to my channel. I really, really, really want to reach that 100,000 subscribers. Since the door is almost completed, it's right there. See you very soon in probably two weeks, <laughs> but for real. But till then, go do something with your hands, your head or both. See you guys. We will build the Lexan Fuck! Ah, ça serait drôle. Sérieux? L'entendez-vous? Neighbor's alarm is on. I'm trying to record things. Ah, phew. Respire. Bride, my friend. Bride. Fromage. Je sais pas pourquoi je dis ça. I'm still... Hey, come on! Next episode, we will build Alexa and Windows. Thank you. Go do something with your hands, your head, and boat. Okay, Stanley, bye. Fronar!